Um, well, welcome uh, to day three. I'm so pleased to hear that you've all been enjoying the conference. I think uh, we try to make it as friendly and welcoming and inclusive as possible. And we're really honored, of course, to, to convene the open education community globally. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes today at the start of the day before we hear from Dominic, who I'm really looking forward to hearing from, to just talk a little bit about the path forward for us, the Open Education Consortium. And so um, I started as the executive director, oh, I guess a little over 18 months ago, and I've been spending a lot of time listening and talking to you all about your interest in open education, the work that you're doing around the world, and how you would like us to help you. And one of the biggest things I'm hearing is that when you think of the Open Education Consortium and what its value to you is, it's largely about us representing the global open education movement and the activities that are taking place around open education around the world. And, and um, I've also been talking to you a little bit about uh, how we can consolidate and express that message in more powerful ways. Uh, one of the things that has emerged for us is that we'll be changing our name from the Open Education Consortium to an Open Education Global to better position and describe that value proposition as an inherent part of our name. Uh, part of the other rationale for doing this is that the word consortium has proven to be a little bit of a tricky word in a global context and doesn't always translate really well, and in some cultures has a kind of negative connotation. And so we feel like uh, the words Open Education Global better represent our organization and what we bring to all of you. So the logo will look like this instead of our former logo. And thank you, Mario, who is here with us. Uh, Mario's uh, part of our team and has done just an amazing job on creating a brand and identity for this, for this new uh, way to depict ourselves. It also has obvious larger implications. And so our URL will change from OE Consortium, which has always been a little bit tricky to say to people, to simply oeglobal.org. Uh, and this will happen over the next few weeks, so I expect early in the new year we'll have completed this transition and you will find us uh, looking like this and find us using that URL. Uh, Mario has also designed a little badge which you see here in the lower left, which we will make available to all of you who are members of the Open Education Global. I'll say now from now on, and that's something that you can put on your website to indicate that you are a member of this community. Another reason we've done this is because as we've grown and as we've taken on more initiatives in support of the work that's happening around the world, we've, we've created an, an, a family of websites. So yes, we do this conference, but we also do Open Education Week. Uh, we do the Open Education Awards, and we have two what I call regional nodes, one for community colleges in the US, the CCC OER, as many of you know it, and a new one that's been established for Latin America, which we call OE LATAM. And as those are all independent websites, and when you go to them, it, isn't, it hasn't always been obvious that they are part of our family, that they are a member of the Open Education Global or Open Education Consortium as we have been known. And so we were looking to find a way to unify them all under a common look. And so this is the way uh, that, we've, uh, that Mario has designed to show that we have a family of websites that are all doing this amazing activity around the world that are unified under this one identity. Uh, as I also listen, another question I've been getting is, what do I get for being a member? Uh, which I really love this question because it's like it really cuts to the chase, right? What, why should we join? And I wanted to just take a few moments today to talk about why you might, if you're not currently a member, why you might choose to become a member. And of course, to thank those who are members for, for being part of us. Um, Obviously, as a member, you're supporting us in helping put on events like this. 
And so if you are not a member and you find an event like this valuable, you should realize that it's the memberships, uh, the mem part of it, the way we can do this is by having membership dues. And so the conference, the awards, and Open Education Week, and the regional nodes are all things, initiatives that, uh, that we can do because members support us. And then every year we take on, beyond those things, special projects that, that are sometimes just one-offs that we just do for that year, sometimes are things that we continue to support over time. This past year we did, uh, we did some support. Igor was a, a mentor for the Open Education for a Better World initiative. And we also, uh, I don't know if Carolina's here from Warsaw, from Centrum Safrova, and, but Nicole is, so it's, uh, we all collectively did an open education policy forum in Warsaw, and then uh, with Martin Dugiamis, who many of you spoken, have spoken to, who's been here at our conference, we did the Open Ed Tech Global Festival last week, which is focusing on the ed tech infrastructure of the open movement and how we can embrace it and also help it find its voice. And so these are special projects that, again, being a member helps us uh, be able to do. But I'm very actually interested in also providing some very direct benefits to members. And so um, earlier this year, we did a needs assessment of our members to hear from them about what they'd like us to provide directly to them as a benefit. And on the right-hand side, you can see some of the things that were expressed. People want to connect to each other to collaborate on projects. Uh, people want professional development and to learn the best practices about open education. They want to work together on policy and strategy, and they want to have a network through which they can communicate, ask questions, get support, find out who's doing what, and celebrate some of the great things that are happening. So we'll be, over the next year, focusing more on this right-hand side, as well as continuing all those other activities, but trying to build out more support and, uh, and initiatives to enable what I call member-to-member -member collaborations. So the way I see this is that those things that are on the right-hand side are largely about connecting you to each other so that you want to partner not with us but with each other around projects. And the professional learning can happen by connecting people who want to learn about one thing with others who already have expertise in that and so on. So this is more about member-to-member -member connections and collaboration than about Open Education Global now creating a whole suite of services that we provide and roll out. So uh, I think the first piece that we'll do is uh, create a listserv that will become a listserv for our Open Education Global members that will provide a forum for them to talk to each other, to ask questions, to seek support, to uh, express interest in finding certain resources and so on. And that will become part of the new website as we begin to roll out this identity. Another component of the listening that I'm hearing is that open education is for everyone. And many of you have told me that historically you've viewed our organization as being primarily about higher education. Uh, so we have actually uh, diversified our membership categories and these are the new categories and as you can see, we have uh, diversified to also be more inclusive of who we think we're trying to serve to include primary and secondary, uh, to also include non-accredited education providers, those that are doing a lifelong learning or work, workplace learning, um, and, and even cultural organizations and government. So a much more comprehensive set of categories uh, which we feel represents the growth of the movement and we hope uh, is welcoming for others to begin to join us and, and help grow the movement from the current 240 plus members we have from over 40 country, 44 countries to even something bigger. And, and when we say open education is for all, we're also talking about the inclusive forms of open education. So. We uh, frequently are talking about open education resources, but as we've heard throughout this conference, it's also about MOOCs and open pedagogy and open access and open data. And so, you know, there's the, the teaching and learning side, there's the research side, and there's, I, I love actually the conversations that have been happening at this event around the community service side of open education. And I think all of those we see as part of our organization and part of who our members are as they engage in open education. 
So uh, when I try now to describe what is our role, what is the Open Education Global Organization, and what is it that we're trying to do in terms of the services and the functions of the members of the organization, in in specifically staff, we're looking to do these things, build community, convene events like this, uh, provide support at both the grassroots level but also at the senior leadership level, uh, help with advocacy and awareness, uh, play a role in curating, communicating and showcasing, and facilitate the matchmaking that I think is so inherently powerful in our movement. And so this, uh, this little picture I did quickly uh, the other day was sort of like a map of the world and what you're seeing there are the little logos representing where we currently have members and also the two regional nodes we have, one in uh, North America in the US and one in South America and we hope to have more going forward in time. I do want to thank, uh, as part of this transition, um, my staff, who uh, we actually have an incredible team, and they're all here. And I wonder if you can just join me in thanking them. <laughs> for, for, um... Um, this is an in incredible honor and pleasure to work with them, and uh, and. Um, we're really humming as a team right now, and, and I hope you can feel it. Um, I, well, and I should also say, um, uh, we, we actually have stickers. I know everyone loves stickers, so you'll find on the sharing table today stickers associated with our new identity, and it's a big sheet with stickers for all of the different things that we're doing, so I hope you'll pick them up and help people um, grow in their awareness of the new identity that we're adopting. I also wanted to announce a few things. Um, Open Education Week, which many of you uh, use to showcase and celebrate your own open education initiatives, is happening on March 2nd through 6th, 2020. So if you haven't got that in your calendar, I really encourage you to, uh, to take advantage of this event. It's completely virtual, it's not place-based at all, and anyone can um, put onto the Open Education Week website the the events and activities that you're uh, undertaking during that week that are about open education and the extent to which they're virtual and uh, invite other people to uh, join and participate in them even better. And I want to invite Marion to join me on the stage. Uh, next year's conference will take place in Taipei, Taiwan. And, um, <laughs> the, the dates are the 20th to the 22nd of November. Uh, we took care not to overlap with U.S. Thanksgiving <laughs> next year. Um, and there will be a little card that looks like this one on the screen, again on the sharing table. So if you want to pick some of these up uh, and um, distribute them to others you think might be interested in joining us there, uh, we welcome you. And I'll just invite Marion now to say a few words about it. Hi. I'm Mary Wang. I'm from Taipei Medical University in Taiwan. Okay, uh, it's my honor that we can host uh, the conference for the next year. And uh, I'm looking forward to see you all in Taiwan and share ideas. Also, drink a lot of bubble teas. <laughs> all right, we've got a lot of uh, a place to see around. and. Uh, I think we will have a lot of events there. Thank you very much. And, and Taipei looks beautiful, really. Uh, so I think it will be amazing. Um, the last thing I want to uh, mention in terms of announcements is that, as you all know, uh, last week UNESCO passed and adopted the OER recommendation. Uh, which I feel is like a really historical moment in this movement uh, because that instrument is a little more binding than the previous declaration and it also signals that 195 member states around the world are committed to doing open education. And so behind the scenes we've been working to form a little bit of a coalition of sister organizations 
And this is really just the start, the ones that I have up here, so don't take that as final, but uh, of sister organizations to help support the implementation of the OER recommendation. Because now we have an OER recommendation, and it's awesome. Actually, the things that are in it, are, I really am, am fond of and feel have a real a strong potential to make a difference. But of course, it's one thing to have a recommendation, it's another thing to actually do it. And so now it's kind of, a, we're moving into the harder part of actually implementing the actions. There's five action areas along with monitoring and reporting in the recommendation. And we felt that it would be fantastic if we could form a coalition of organizations who would all collaborate together on developing support and then delivering support. And the, the way I kind of conceptualize it is that, for example, Open Education Global would would work with these sister organizations to create resources and services that we would then make available to our members to help with the implementation of the recommendation. And as you know, 195 member states, that's a lot of countries around the world, and some of them will have already been doing stuff in open education, but many of them will, will not, and will need some real bootstrap support to get going. So uh, you could, th we, we are, uh, every, these organizations have agreed to be part of the coalition. We'd like to share across the member, or across the sister organizations, the efforts to, like who already has resources that can support the recommendation? Where do we have gaps that we need to create more things? And then how can we collectively look at rolling out this implementation and support to our members and the larger community? So going forward in time, you can expect to see uh, this coalition and I expect other members to join representing parts of the world that perhaps aren't adequately represented by the current members of this coalition uh, to begin announcing support and services and resources that can help you implement the OER recommendation. Uh, so uh, actually some of the, our, our sister organizations are here in the room so thank you so much for agreeing to be part of this. I think it's fantastic that we not only are starting to see collaborations and connections among practitioners in the field, but also around organizations who are, are engaged in supporting the overall open education effort around the world. And I, th I really look forward to working with all of you. Last couple of things for me. Um, uh, we've been, of course, celebrating our sponsors as part of this event. And many of you have been enjoying, I think, these Ferrero chocolates <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the coffee, the little coffee ones. I know I ate a lot of those yesterday <laughs> at the World Cafe. And so these were, this is actually, uh, Ferrero is essentially our chocolate sponsor of this, um, of this conference. Um, they donated these chocolates to the conference for us to make available to all of you. And you'll find throughout the day that the lots of these chocolates continue to be available, for, and so I hope you enjoy them. Um, I wanted to also so, say that we have had a professional photographer working at this event for the last couple of days, and will still be here today. And we've already uploaded the photos from day one and day two. Um, and here are the links, and I tried to simplify them. They're all in Flickr, and so I did a, a bitly simplification of the uh, URLs. I encourage you to go look at these photos. They're really beautiful, and they're all of you. And I know often we all need to make use of a photo in our work, and so I hope they're all openly licensed, of course, and so I hope you uh, find a photo of yourself or the work that you've been doing here at the conference that you can use to help communicate what you do to your peers. Um, so, OE Global 19 Day 1, OE Global 19 Day 2, OE Global 19 Awards, and then OE Global 19 World Cafe 1, 2, and 3. Those are all different uh, collections of photos from the last two days. And of course, uh, there'll be uh, OE Global 19 Day 3 at, at, after today. Um, and with that, I'm finished. Oh, no, wait. Susan will, will hit me if I don't say this. Um, uh, you can also expect to receive from us 
a survey, which I know is a really typical thing to do after a conference, but we really do welcome and ask you to provide some feedback for us on how you enjoyed this conference, like Chrissy's been doing with people at the beginning of each, of each day. I think that's a wonderful thing, and we would love to hear you tell us about your experience at this conference and to make some recommendations on how we can actually make it better for you with future conferences going forward. So that link to a survey will likely come out today. And with that, I'll turn it um, back to who's introducing Dominic. Is it you, Susanna? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>